Welcome back. Now, we all know that for the past 40 years, Andrew Lloyd Webber has been a hit-making musical machine. Never missing a trick, he's recently turned his attentions to finding incredible new talent by getting in on the reality TV show act. These reality shows not only find new talent, they also create a whole new level of interest for the public. As well as being a songwriter, he's kind of an A&R man as well. He's looking for the new talent. Andrew used television, I think, in a really clever way. I think he saw the success of shows like Pop Idol and X Factor, and he thought, how can I take that popular success and bring it to my world, musical theatre? One, two, three, four! Andrew Lloyd Webber! Yeah! It's when he put himself on a throne, I thought, I think he might be taking this a tiny bit too seriously, but only Andrew could get away with that. Andrew's not a person to sit on the sidelines. He really gets involved and he nurtures new talent. I love you, boy, I love you so. He really was involved. I don't think I could have got through that competition without having him there. I think it really humanised him, not just on the screen, but kind of in life. It's brought so many new people into the theatre and it's kept it thriving. He's responsible for so much of the success that's now, you know, driving the West End. Andrew Webber is cool. He's made musical theatre cool. I think Randy's do TV was a big leap. But what a clever thing to do, because I think the nation sort of fell in love with him. <laughs> How did you get the idea that this was the way forward for musical theatre? I to... wanted to produce The Sound of Music yeah. because I loved it and I saw um, it when I was at school. And I wanted to star Scarlett Johansson in it. And okay. it was all sort of agreed and all done because I wanted a girl who was the real age of Maria, i.e. 18, mm -hmm. and somebody fresh from the, the convent. You didn't want some sort of older woman doing it, which is how I've always seen it. And anyway, Scarlett wanted to do it, but I suppose from her point of view, wisely, her agent said no. They said, you know, you can't be in the London Palladium for nine months when she had a huge film career. So I thought, what am I going to do? Because if I don't have a star as Maria, I'm going nowhere, because nobody's going to want to see a revival of The Sound of Music, however good, unless we've got a star. And, and uh, at the end of the day, I, I thought, do you know, it's the only way I'm going to get The Sound of Music on is if I could get somebody to do it as a talent competition. And, of course, one of the great ones we did, would, would have, from, from talent point of view, was looking for Nancy for Oliver. Yeah. And we found some fantastic girls. Well, funny, really... funny you should say that, because we're going to see one of the new stars of the West End discovered by Andrew. She's gone from reality show hopeful to landing a major starring role in the film of Les Miserables opposite uh, Hugh Jackman and Russell Crowe. Here to sing her favourite Lloyd Webber song from Evita, it's Samantha Barks.
She really is going to be a big star, isn't she? She's though? fantastic. I mean, that's a really difficult song to sing, one of my most difficult, because it goes right across the break in a girl's voice. Yeah. And she just does it effortlessly. Well, your last reality show, of course, was Jesus Christ Superstar. Yeah. And before we talk about the man you cast as Jesus, you cast Mary Magdalene from the panel. Yes, well, she was on the panel. It was obvious, wasn't it? I mean, Mel C's just absolutely terrific. I don't know why I didn't think about it in the first place, but, I mean, she's marvellous. Of course, she was a huge success in Blood Brothers. And then what did you think of the public's actual choice, Ben Forster? Well, Ben was ter tremendous. I mean, we had a fantastic line-up. It's that thing of finding something fresh, new, that we would not have found if we'd just gone through the old well, audition way. Let's see uh, an excerpt from Jesus Christ Superstar with the winner, Ben Forster, leading Lady Melanie C and the irrepressible Chris Moyles. Let's see what they do together in one special performance. <laughs> Terrific. 
Fantastic. Join us for more after the break, including a world premiere performance from Andrew's brand new musical. You don't want to miss that. See you in a minute. <laughs> Welcome back to an evening of music, memories, stories and songs. Just your average night in with Andrew Lloyd Webber. It's, uh, it's time to go global as we see how his shows have taken off all over the world. I don't think anyone has had the impact on the musical that Andrew has had. My goodness, uh, that's kind of, kind of majestic. <laughs> Before Lloyd Webber, I don't think anyone had ever dreamt or imagined that shows could run for decades. A smash hit would be a year, two years, perhaps four years. To think that these shows are now crossing generations, it's an astonishing and unique achievement. People who went to see the shows first time round now can take their children, and I think that generations to come will enjoy the shows forever. The only time my mother, who died when I was 13, ever saw me sing uh, in public was I played the part of Pharaoh in, uh, in Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. I've never told that to anyone. They weren't just your average singing, tap dancing, chorus girls grinning musicals. And so they broke new ground and I think made a huge impact. I think anyone who's ever met Andrew will realise what a lively, keen interest he has in everything going around him. One thing that Andrew can write is a good tune. No matter what they tell us No matter what they do Yes, everything's as if we never said goodbye I think uh, the reason for the global success of it is you can hear a tune once and you walk out of the, the show at the end, an hour later or so, humming it. It's the big tunes in the end. I mean, really. They're timeless and that's why he's had so many hits around the world. I mean, he is literally a musical genius. It's really annoying. <laughs> Well, you heard it here first, folks. Simon Cowell gets annoyed by musical genius. We saw that in that film, cl clips of all the shows that have gone worldwide. The big one, though, is Phantom. Yeah. Did that success take you by surprise? Well, sort of yes and no, because it's a weird thing. When Phantom first was in preview, it's the only show I've ever seen. It's the, it'll never happen to me again. I saw the first preview, Hal Prince, the director, was with me, and we knew there was nothing to alter. You know, most shows you fiddle and you yeah. do this and this and the other. And I just remember Hal saying, just let's leave it alone. Just let it play. It's fine. And you never normally get that. I had no idea. Nobody could have an idea that the Phantom would be what it became. Mm. Because, you know, it wasn't, wasn't an idea that sort of instantly seemed such a good one. At the time, was it your most personal show? Because you'd written well, it for yeah, Sarah, yeah, Sarah Bright. Kind, kind of, everybody thinks that, but what in actual fact happened oh dear. was uh, <laughs> that um, Sarah was asked to do it uh, as a kind of jokey version that was going to be done, uh, and eventually came into uh, the Theatre Royal Stratford East. And Cameron McIntosh and I thought it might be quite funny to produce it. It was, being, it was written by a guy called Ken Hill, and it used real opera, and it was, it was sort of jokey, larky kind of thing. Right. And I didn't really think that it was for me at all. So six months passed, and I found the book um, in a second-hand bookstore in New York, read it, and I thought, it's completely different. I think I could do something with that. And uh, actually, although Sarah was obviously a very important part of it, I never, ever liked writing for a specific person, even though she was Damn. my wife. I know. <laughs> but I just, just find it very inhibiting, you know? Really? Um, and I know Phantom... In a way, some people, well, I know I'll never ever be able to equal it as a, as a success, or, you know, but you never go into writing thinking you're going to do it. I had not a clue that Phantom was going to be a huge global success. So, I, I thought it was going to work, yeah. 
but I had no idea about the extent. So over it's now, is it nearly 28 years that it's been running? There have been many, many Christines there have been uh, many throughout Christines. the years. Uh, you asked uh, the lady who's about to sing for us. Well, I'll put my net on the line here. I'll say Sierra is one of the most talented girls working in musical theatre, period. And it's only a matter of time before she becomes an absolute megastar. And I'm going to get to sing with her now. That is what's going to make her career. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited about this. I and I tell, I, can I say one thing? Yes. Just to have you singing with Sierra will make my evening. And uh, we can do it. It'll be my pleasure. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to sing alongside Andrew's favourite Christine, the fabulous Sierra Bogus, All I Ask of You from Phantom of the Opera. Talk of darkness, forget these wide eyed fears. I'm here, nothing can harm you. My words will warm and calm you. Let me be your freedom, let daylight dry your tears. I'm here with you, beside you, to guard you to guide you Say you'll share with me 
Danke. Is it all right? Yeah, fantastic. You know, you guys should go professional one of these days. Oh, no. Stop, stop all this chat show Don't get stuff. me started. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was absolutely fantastic, Michael, to hear you. Gosh, insane key as it originally was written. I know. <laughs> I mean, that is a real classic, isn't it, that love song? Do you know something? I've got a little tear in my eye. I mean, that is still, I think... I, I always wanted to write a, a great love song, and I don't think I'll ever do better than that. And Sierra, what about that? She's I mean, goodness, she's, 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 she's the greatest. She's well, from one of, the, one of the biggest successes in musical theatre history, to the newest. I mean, you're, you're writing away, and, uh, <laughs> and you have a new show in development. Is it, is it finished yet? It's finished. I've written it. Wow. Um, but... tell, us, tell us about it. Well, it's about a guy called Stephen Ward, who was, back in the early 60s, I suppose probably the most sought-after dinner guest, the most sought-after person in London. He was the leading top osteopath. He did everybody from Gandhi to Churchill to um, Kennedy to everything, and he became the fall guy for the whole Profumo affair, which was about Christine Keeler and Mandy Rice Davis. And it just fascinates me to write a story about somebody who was that popular and that, that loved by the whole of society, and yet they manufactured something against him, which was not true. And he, in the end, uh, he committed suicide. I mean, it doesn't sound like the most wonderful idea for a musical, but I tell you... But you've had worse. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, as my wife always says to me, all of my successful musicals seem to have somebody who dies at the end of it, which Phantom doesn't, actually, but um, it, it's, it, it strikes me as just an extraordinarily interesting story, and it's all about the kind of things that are going on at the moment, you know, about the press manipulating, about the police manipulating. About scandal in politics. It's about scandal in politics, indeed, and Precisely. covering up and covering up. Talking about it, I'm, I can't wait to see it, but we're going to have a, a, a world premiere now from uh, Andrew's new musical, and here to play is one of the most gifted guitarists in the world. This is Milos.
absolutely beautiful. Coming up after the break, we still have performances from Nicole Scherzinger and myself. And uh, I'm just the gift that keeps on giving, aren't I? See you in a minute. <laughs>